Pregnant women of Reddit. What is something you wish you knew before you got pregnant? Nosebleeds. Not currently pregnant. But when I was. I got nosebleeds every few days during the first and second trimesters. From my mom. I paralyzed her from the waist down for a few hours because I decided to take a nap on her spinal cord in the third trimester. The doctor's response was yeah you'll be able to move again once they wake up. Pregnancy is pure body horror. Your body produces a hormone called relaxin that helps loosen your pelvis in preparation for birth. Some women get wii too much too soon and it loosens everything to the point you lose mobility and every day all day is painful. Gave birth two days ago. I'm working up an apology for my midwife for yelling at her as she supported my butthole while I was pushing. I was not at my most gracious in that moment. Edit. In true Reddit fashion. My most upvoted comment ever is about my asshole. I love you Reddit. I wish someone would have warned me about the constipation. Corollary. I wish someone would have warned me that fiber supplement does not equal stool softener. Today. We're at 26 weeks gestation. During labor the water breaking is not one rush of liquid. It's continuous and can occur for several hours. It's horrendous and messy and incredibly awful to deal with. It feels like peeing but you have zero control over anything and if you tense up then everything is much more painful and weird feeling. Nobody ever told me that and I was very surprised to find out for myself. Not currently pregnant. But I wish someone had warned me about muscle cramps. I had to learn a new way to pop my ankles because every night I would pop them and get massive charley horses in my legs that my fiance had to massage out. The stuff that stays with your body afterwards. I developed allergies after I had my second. My feet definitely got bigger. Hormones are no joke. My feet grew half a size and my hair got curly. It was wavy before. But now I get ringlets. It also made my fingernails stronger. Also I developed an aversion to beef that never really went away. I only eat it like once a month to this day. And my youngest is about to turn 10. It's like a second puberty. What is happening to my body? That morning sickness isn't in the morning. And that I would be puking the whole time not just in the beginning. Edited to add. Hair loss. After I had my kid I lost a ton of hair. I would pull fists full of hair during my showers. I thought there was something wrong with me because no one told me about this. Went to Google. Totally normal and it happens to everyone. It grows back eventually and you'll go through an awkward baby hair phase. I wish someone had told me that no. Your body does not magically go back to normal once the baby is out. You have weeks of healing. Either your ripped vagina or cut open stomach. Your boobs are still on baby mode and have a whole new set of problems now. Pooping will be terrifying lol depression risks are higher. Just a lot of stuff continues on after the baby. I don't know why people insist on visiting right after delivery. I am tired. I am busy with this baby. I am tore up from the floor up. Please come in a month when I can at least have some sort of a routine. My eyeing boobs hurt so bad. I hit one in my sleep and woke up in excruciating pain. Like. WTF. I knew they got bigger. But the pain was a surprise. Miscarriage is ridiculously common. I say this as someone currently carrying a dead baby waiting for the NHS to give me a surgical removal. How I'd get loads of random skin changes. Skin tags. So many skin tags. Moles growing into skin tags then dropping off. Like WTF body. Sandpaper dry skin. Which I still get from time to time. Just this one patch on the back of my right hand. My facial skin changing from T-zone oily to T-zone flaky and never going back. My psoriasis on my scalp going away. This did come back but not as bad. Here. So you stop shedding hair whilst pregnant and you get really thick lovely hair. A few weeks after birth you start to lose all that extra hair. How tired you can be in the first trimester. I was falling asleep at my desk most days. 
I always hear that labor pains were like really awful period cramps. Nope. Mine felt like someone was stabbing the front of my hip. And. I had heard about sciatic pain but was 100% unprepared for how bad it could be. I had a c-section and the gas pain was no joke. Had to sleep on an incline for days. Edit. The sickest joke of all. You stop being able to sleep way before the baby gets here. Everyone loves to tell me to sleep now while I can but pregnancy leads to unexplained insomnia and I'm a total wreck already. Parents before you get pregnancy. It's wonderful you have to do it. Parents 10 seconds after hearing you're expecting. Ahahahaha <laughs> welcome to hell. No sleep for you. Prepare to age decades every month. Full stop. That cravings aren't just food. I crave dirt. Particularly beach sand. The smell of the beach was excruciating. I just wanted to shovel handfuls into my mouth. I never ate dirt or sand and the craving went away when baby was born. A friend of a friend told me she craved freshly poured asphalt so in a way I'm glad my craving was just dirt. Edit. My top comment is about wanting to eat dirt. Cool. I know it's called pica and a deficiency. I took iron and a prenatal however I had a super hard time eating after the morning sickness wore off. Had no desire to eat whatsoever. Except dirt. Each pregnancy is different. Even with the same person. I have three kids the first pregnancy was very typical and followed the normal timeline. Second pregnancy was awful. I was miserable and sick the entire time. Third pregnancy was easy peasy and I finally understood why some women liked being pregnant. Your hormones are crazy. Literally making anything and everything that happens to your body a pregnancy symptom. Bloody nose. Pregnancy. Hands dry. Pregnancy. Itchy skin. Pregnancy. Pregnancy is the wild eyeing west y'all. That everyone has an opinion on what you do whilst pregnant and how you want to raise your child. I wish I'd heard the term mother's apron before I had one. Like. There's warnings all over. Your body's going to change. And some specifics on how. But everything I read and heard was reassuring me about how it would all mostly go back eventually. I'm still pretty bitter. Yup. No one told me. My skin isn't very elastic and I lost the weight extremely fast after both babies resulting in a lot of sag. My tummy is foreign to me. I hear people talk about people's few puss on other subreddits and how unattractive the women are for mistreating their bodies. Makes me sad whenever I look in the mirror. Only way to treat it is surgery or accepting and changing the way I look at myself. That not all gynecologists are competent. And if you have a feeling yours isn't. Find a new one. Mine was very personable. Did my DNC for my miscarriage before my firstborn. Didn't really give me any red flags until after I was pregnant again. Long story short. He forgot, I guess. Comma to have me tested for gestational diabetes. And I had it. There were obvious signs that he didn't catch. That I didn't even know were signs until my new doctor told me. My son ended up having to be in NICU for 3 days after he was born because he couldn't regulate his own blood sugar. Every doctor and nurse I talked to along the way was appalled I hadn't gotten tested. He also didn't catch that I was anemic the whole pregnancy either. That no matter how much you planned and wanted your baby, postpartum depression can happen to you and it is very, very real. It is not something you can control. Hormones are lies. Partners of new moms please pay close attention. Get help. Do not try to tough it out. Get. Help. Edit. Not currently pregnant. I went through it with my first almost 24 years ago and I'm still haunted by it. I just want new parents and potential new parents to be aware. Please don't be ashamed. It doesn't mean you don't love your baby and it doesn't mean you aren't a good parent. Best of all. Edit number 2 A lot of people sent me messages. I am not ignoring you but I can't see them. It says I have 25 messages but they aren't there. Sorry. Baby kicks don't feel like butterflies. They feel like something crawled across your skin quickly. 
no one ever told me about the third delivery aka your first poop. I was struggling for so long. Edit. My first awards. Thank you people. Never thought talking about poop would get me awards. Edit 2. For all asking. The first delivery is the baby. Second is the placenta and the third is the poo. Second time around I started stool softener two weeks before my due date. Game changer. It was still scary but much easier. Bread causes heartburn. Lockyer. It's basically the biggest period ever as your body expels the leftovers from carrying a baby. And it can go on for weeks. I will never forget being told that I might pass clots as big as a tennis ball and that was normal. So gross. Also. Babies in the womb can have hiccups. Hiccups are weird enough when they're your own. It's bizarre to feel someone else's. Every pregnancy is different. This means some pregnant women can work out. Hike. Do their normal stuff just a little slower most of their pregnancy. Then there are some women who throw up the whole time. They are weak and tired and just standing up takes time and effort. I was the latter. Expecting at the same time as another and the former and I was constantly compared and judged. Working out is healthy for you and the baby. If so and so can do it so can you. This entire thread is great birth control. Sorry to be the Debbie Downer but knowing things can go wrong in any situation. My first child was stillborn 41 weeks after a healthy and normal pregnancy from an umbilical cord accident. Always trust your gut. Count kicks. This is mostly a third trimester thing. But that when you are active and moving. It kinda rocks the baby to sleep. But as soon as you lay down to go to sleep. Baby wakes up and starts kicking and spinning. Might not be super common. Comma. But I knew a lot of other mothers who complained about this. 2. How being pregnant seems to make other people think they can make incredibly rude observations about your body that they'd never make otherwise. You can do everything right and have an easy pregnancy but baby is born prematurely. The kicker is you may never get a reason as to why. Obligatory not pregnant but mom who had a baby in the NICU for over a month. Edit. My first award. That you can get a horrible full body rash. It's a rare condition called PUPPP. PUPPP occurs in about 1 in every 200 pregnancies and 70% of sufferers give birth to boys. I gave birth to a girl. So I was in the zero. 15% of women who get this horrible. Itchy. Mind numbing rash that I suffered with for over 2 months. I couldn't sleep. I sat half of my day in oatmeal baths. I cried a lot. The only thing that stopped the itching for a few hours was grandpa's tar soap because it left a coating on my skin that soothed or protected it somehow. Never want to go through that again. Not a woman. But I wish I knew the warning signs of preeclampsia. Girlfriend was 7 months pregnant at the time. And had been complaining of generally not feeling good with a constant headache that would occasionally break for a bit. I came home from work, I work overnights, to her sleeping on the floor and I eventually got to bed but I woke up 3 hours later to hear a thud and she was having a seizure. Turns out she went to Clamtic. She ended up having a c-section. Daughter was in the NICU for a bit but both are doing great now. What really put things into how close my girlfriend was to dying was the doctors and nurses saying how few people they've seen go at Clamptic and one of the nurses said she's only seen 3 cases in like 10 years and 2 of them died. If you lose 10% or more of your body weight due to nausea and vomiting. It is a big deal and could put you and the baby's life in danger. If your OB acts like it isn't. Find another doctor. Written by a two-time hyperemesis gravidarium survivor. Lost 42 pounds during one pregnancy and 35 with the other. And that was with constant Zofran and IVs and a pick line and hospital bed rest. The attention. I'm an introvert and I mostly try to keep to myself at work but that's impossible now. I was pretty small before I got pregnant and I'm now 30 pounds heavier so I'm really showing. People from other departments come and ask me how I'm doing. How far along I am. And the baby is due. What the gender is. 
If I've picked out a name. Etc. It's exhausting. Not currently pregnant. But the mom. Pregnancy brain is real. It's not a joke. It's not exaggerated. When you start forgetting. Misplacing. And outright losing things. You can start feeling like you're also losing your mind. Finding your missing remote in the daily drawer of your refrigerator is disconcerting. Finding the ice cream you just bought melted in the bathroom closet is enough to bring you to tears. Then you start screwing up or even completely forgetting words and even names. And the concern deepens. This. Is. All. Normal. A combination of hormones. Other changes in your body. Changes in your eating and sleeping habits. And generally big life changes are doing a number on your noggin. It's okay. It's normal. You'll get through it and eventually the brain fog will clear. I told my boss that I've turned into an outdated phone. Slow on processing. Tie battery life. And. I forgot the third. Oh yay. Out of memory. Not currently pregnant. But I wish I was told about the constant swelling of my ankles and feet. I swelled to the point of needing to buy shoes a size and a half bigger. Not everyone falls in love instantly. I like mine but didn't fall in love till after a year. Watched a friend go through this. I visited her couple times in the first 6 months after birth. I got the distinct feeling she had not bonded with her baby but didn't bring it up. About a year later she told me she had been worried she wouldn't bond with him because he was just a crying pooping feeding ball of blub. Now he is almost 3 and she is very very happy. She got first time pregnant by surprise at 38 for all you older people. Decided to keep him because the horizon for second chances look narrow. She has no regrets. Everyone talks about pregnancy cravings. No one tells you that the opposite can happen. During this pregnancy. My second. I had aversions to most food until about 22 stroke 23 weeks. I'm 27. 5 weeks now and finally starting to feel better about eating. But certainly don't have cravings. How comfortable maternity pants are. I was stubborn the first time around and didn't want to switch over from my regular clothes. Miscarriages are not spoken about enough. No one tells you how much it's going to hurt nor how long your hormones will take ages to go back to normal and how much it affects your mental health. I wish I'd known to go to a pelvic floor physical therapist sooner. Been pregnant before. No one explains morning sickness. There is a difference between feeling sick and you know when you feel really sick like just before you vomit you can feel it at the bottom of your neck about to projectile sick. Had that for 5 weeks straight. How hungry you can be. All. The. Time. Especially twins. Then how hungry you still are after baby comes. Then it is hungry you are while breastfeeding. And sometimes the weight doesn't go away. How hard it can be to get. And stay. Pregnant. Everyone imagines it will happen easily and quickly and. Unfortunately. It's not the case for so many women. And for women who've dealt with infertility or loss. How much anxiety you'll have throughout the pregnancy. You can order one. But get two. The kicks are so unnerving. I never got used to them. I felt like I was in that movie Alien. From my wife. How little you want to wear pants. And throwing up becomes not physical. But emotional. And apples suck when throwing up. Honey nut Cheerios. Least bad. And get a good body pillow. That it's not uncommon to have thyroid problems or lose your gallbladder or both because of hormones etc. That feeling like the bottom dropped out of you weeks after giving birth is not normal and might require therapy. That it's not a good idea to have an OB who loves being pregnant and thinks it's easy because she will have zero sympathy when you struggle. That giving birth later in life can actually kick you into early menopause. Maternal care and aftercare is in the U. S. Your pancreas might just stop working. Gestational diabetes sucks. You basically have to eat really healthy. Check your blood. 
or even take insulin until that kid is born. I thought pregnancy meant I could eat ice cream dipped tacos. But I could barely eat half an English muffin without my blood sugar going over. So sad. You can poop good. I don't know if it's iron and the prenatal vitamins. Or hormones. Or a combination. But I haven't pooped as usual for months now. Prunes and prune juice are part of my everyday diet and still won't go back to normal. Also. Not every woman gets morning illness. Not every woman gets mad cravings 24 stroke 7. It doesn't mean there's something wrong. Finally. A couple of now babied friends tell me you really should get some exercise while you can. It will make a difference in months 7 to 9. Yet to get there but definitely working out as I go. My wife's currently pregnant. And in the middle of the night my great dame gets up. And licks me in the face to wake me up about 2 minutes before my wife wakes up feeling ill. Every time. And the dog has never done this before in the 9 years we have had her. It's actually really helpful. But at 2A. M. The first time it happened I was very confused. Edit. I realize I'm not one of the pregnant women of Reddit. But saw other dads commenting too. Speaking as the husband. My wife was very annoyed when she learned later in her pregnancy the borderline miracle properties of ginger as regards morning sickness. Wish she'd known it from the jit go. It may seem obvious but you will not sleep like you used to. I'm a belly sleeper and have had the worst time sleeping since like 15 weeks. Pregnancy pillow doesn't help. Currently 36 weeks organs and I'm so happy there's a light at the end of the tunnel. This is my first and I'm debating if I want to do it again. I'm sure it'll all be worth it when I meet the sweet babe but we'll see. Not every woman becomes a sex kitten and wants to have sex all the time. Some women literally want nothing to do with it. You're tired. Uncomfortable. And exhausted because hormones. You do not have to enjoy every minute of parenthood. It's okay to have bad days and days when you think your kids are assholes. You're not tying this up, it's just that hard. How it and childbirth can still kill you despite modern medicine. You can mess with them in utero. When I was close to the end of both of my pregnancies one of my favorite things to do was. When he would push up against my ribcage I would pound back a glass of ice water or eat a bowl of ice cream and as soon as that coldness hit my stomach he would back down. Also. My first liked to push his butt up against the front wall of my stomach pretty hard. So that there was a tiny little bump that you couldn't see but I could feel. So I could sort of grab it and shake it around a little bit. My husband called out my daughter's name with his face next to my belly. And it startled her my whole belly jumped. So hilarious. And I think it was one of the first times my husband truly got to interact with her. Sometimes you go pee. Stand up. And sit back down to pee again. I didn't realize how weird it would feel having a baby with you literally all the time. And I say this as the parent of a now toddler. There were several times where I would be in a super serious work meeting while pregnant. Baby would do a somersault in my stomach. And I would be like. Oh. There's a baby in this boardroom. IDK. Just weirded me out. Schools should make the kids read this thread teen pregnancy numbers will fall drastically. If you have any underlying health conditions. This. Thought I was super healthy going into it. Got pregnant on our first try. I ended up with hypothyroidism. Gestational diabetes. And postpartum preeclampsia. Baby and I both almost died during the emergency c-section. My recovery is still ongoing. That after you give birth. The blood that comes out 4 weeks will stink like a dead body. That a baby can wedge its tiny feet under your rib and break it. Oh and they don't necessarily drop later in the pregnancy. My wolverine baby clung to my womb until the last possible second. You're going to need to pee all the time. And only a drop will come out. Then you need to pee again 15 minutes later. The most annoying time is during the night when you should be sleeping. But instead you're just getting up to pee every few hours. Once you have the first kid. 
the clock starts ticking for the second whether you like it or not. The way you want your first kid's life to go is heavily affected by any siblings they have and the age gaps between them. So you might not be ready for a second baby yet but for your kid to have the lifestyle you want for them. Now is the time to start planning a second one. Or you could decide not to have more kids at all. But the point is the decision to have a first baby isn't isolated. Watch out for any symptoms of preeclampsia. Not just high blood pressure. Just because high BP is the most common. Doesn't mean it is the symptom you will display. There is a secondary condition called HELLP that is severely life threatening to you and the baby. If you are in your third trimester and have suddenly started having morning sickness. That is not normal. Contact your OB right away. Spoken as someone who went in for their 30 week appointment only to be admitted to the hospital for liver failure and low platelets and had to have an emergency c-section that night. Baby and I are fine now. But it doesn't always work out that way.